Hi, welcome to Car Auctions Weekly. Today we're going to break down the insider walls around car auctions and car sales in general. There's a lot of phrases, terminology, and acronyms that are used within this. And at the end of this, you'll understand all of it. Thank you for joining me and being a part of this. If there's any terminology or questions that come from this, please put it in the comments below and I will make sure to go through that and answer it. And if there's a lot, then we'll have a follow on video that'll cover all of that. Here at Car Auctions Weekly, we cover significant, interesting, and many times amusing auctions that happen on Bring a Trailer as well as Cars and Bids. Sometimes, like today, we're going to cover some of the details around auctions and we're going to break down the barriers so that everybody understands more about them and can be a part of them. Starting things off today, we have the two auction sites that we cover primarily, Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids, and those are simply referred to as BAT or C&B. Now we're going to hop right into auction terminology. And so the first one that we're going to cover is going to be hammer price. So hammer price refers to live auctions when they actually drop the hammer. Many times in the same breath, people will talk about across the block. And so in a live auction, there's actually an auction block where the cars actually come right across the auction block. And then that's where they are actually sold. Then we have reserve and no reserve. And these are referring to whether or not there is a price set by the seller that it has to reach before the sale will actually transact. And so sometimes if a price is set at say $16,000, you won't know that it's at that, but the seller knows it's at 16. So until it gets to that point, the sale actually won't go through. Then we have no reserve auctions and no reserve auctions are like you can imagine, there's no reserve price set that it has to reach to. So this car will sell 100% of the time. During an auction, there's many terms that you'll hear, one of which is bid. Bid is something that happens by an authorized user who is bidding on that car. And so let's say that they go in and they bid $10,000 on that car. That commits them legally to pay the $10,000 plus the buyer's premium that's on that. In addition, there's a thing called a minimum bid. Minimum bid is generally about 1% of the value of the current bid. So if it's at $10,000, it's $100. And so that minimum bid is the increment that it goes up. So the next person has to bid $10,100 and so on and so forth. Another terminology that you may hear is sniping. And so sniping was something that happened back in the day. And what would happen is people would wait till the clock came down to zero and they would actually have automated programs so that you could grab it at the last second for just a dollar above a certain amount or whatever the case may be. And so the way that the auction sites, cars and bids, as well as bring a trailer have, have counteracted this is once you put in a bid on bring a trailer, it increases the clock to two minutes. And on cars and bids, it increases it to one minute. So there is no sniping. And so it takes that off the table and makes it a little bit more of a fair process so that there aren't computer programs manipulating the price of vehicles. Another acronym that you may see from time to time relative to bidding is RNM or DMR. And so those mean reserve not met or did not meet reserve. And that's simply that there was a reserve on that car and it did not reach that, so there was no sale. So I mentioned the seller, so we have two different versions of sellers, if you will. So you have the seller who's the actual person who owns the car and they're selling it. And then you have the consigner. So consigner many times will be a dealership or something of that or a friend or whatever. And so that consigner is actually selling it for the owner of the vehicle. As a seller, many times there's a fee associated with listing it on a website and they call it a seller's fee or a listing fee. And so these fees are different per site. With cars and bids, they don't charge a seller's fee currently. At one point they did, now they don't. On Bring a Trailer, they have a seller's fee now, which I believe starts off at 99 and goes up to $350. In the same vein as the seller's fee, there's also a buyer's fee, or sometimes it's called a buyer's premium. And so the buyer's fee varies from site to site as well, and this is the same in, in live auctions. On cars and bids, it's 4.5% up to $4,500 and then on bring a trailer it's 5% up to $5,000 and so if it's a $100,000 car or more you only pay that $5,000 and there's no additional fee on top of that and that fee goes to the auction site. 
Now we're going to hop into car condition terms. And this is going to get a little confusing, but I'm going to try to break it down for you so that it's nice and simple. The first term we're going to cover is OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturer. And so that refers to who made the car, Ford or Nissan or whoever the case may be. And now we're going to cover OE. So OE is Original Equipment. And original equipment mainly refers to the parts that are on the vehicle. So sometimes this can get a little confusing relative to performance packages that came with the vehicle or were options for the vehicle. So in a purist standpoint, OE stands for, you know, what came on the car originally. But since they were options, it potentially is an original equipment part that was put on the vehicle. And so let's say that you had a GT350R and you got the option for carbon wheels and that was the way that it was delivered. Technically speaking, OE in that case, the original equipment that came delivered on that vehicle was the carbon wheels. Next, we're going to jump into refurbishment. So refurbishment can be termed in several different instances, whether it be refurbishing an interior a part, a car, and they mean a little bit different things for each one of those. So if you refurbished a car, the entire car has been went over, all the parts are functioning, working, that type of thing. It may not mean that everything is brand new or as new, but everything is refurbished. If you refurbish an interior, generally speaking, it's reupholstering or at least cleaning, prepping, and doing all of those types of things. And it could mean doing a lot of re work on the interior. When you talk about refurbishing a part, you're generally making it so it's fully functional. You're not making it as new, but you're making it fully functional. Then you have restoration. Restoration basically means making it as new or making it like new. It can also mean making it better than new, and that happens in today's world quite a bit. The next terms are a little less subjective than the last two we just went over. The next up is a rotisserie restoration. So for this, just think of a chicken you know, turning on the rotisserie. So these are essentially taking a body and frame completely apart and you'll see the body on the rotisserie moving it around. And so that's when they completely go through something and, and tear it down to those pieces and then restore it completely from that, whether it's fixing rust damage or fixing the paint and redoing the body and cleaning it all up. And then we have resto mod. Resto mod is essentially restoring to a modern condition, if you will. So let's take a 60s Corvette or Mustang or Bronco or whatever the case may be, and there will be modern suspension underneath those vehicles, modern braking systems, modern engines and interiors, and all the conveniences and safety that goes along with that. So that's a resto mod. Now we're gonna hop into general car knowledge terms. The first thing that we're gonna to touch on is the most important for the vehicle is the VIN. The VIN is the vehicle identification number. And so the VIN is how you track that vehicle. You can do research on it on many sites to find out how it was delivered as new with OE equipment and OE option packages. And then the VIN is also used to track with Carfax, which we'll touch on a little bit later, but that tracks down the history of the vehicle, whether it be service or crash related or title related. Next up is TMU. TMU is something that people use to refer to the mileage, total mileage unknown. And this happens with vehicles that have been restored, have new dashes, or it's rolled over many times on the older vehicles that only had five digit uh, mileage odometers. Speaking of Carfax, so a Carfax report is a report that you can generate based on the VIN, the vehicle identification number, and the Carfax will show many times some of its service history, probably not all of it, but it's getting better with time. And then it will show many times some of the wreck history or title related history that's happened to this vehicle. Now that doesn't mean that it's the holy grail, but it will show what it has on record. If there was something that happened off record and it wasn't reported, then it won't show up in the Carfax. So you have to be very cautious on that. Now Carfax also has warranties and guarantees that they have relative to the title. And so they'll guarantee that there wasn't wreck damage on this vehicle. And if you find that after purchase, 
then you can talk with them about that. I'm not going to say how that works. I've never actually had to do that, but it is out there. So please research before you buy, right? Since we touched on Carfax and we touched on title history, now we're going to jump into some of the title terminology. And this is relative to buying a car or selling a car. And so I'll just uh, say one thing that I heard from Ed Bullion, who's an ex-cannonballer, and he had the record for driving across country for a while. And uh, he, he loves stories. And so one of his stories was essentially there's three things in a car transaction. The title, the keys or the car, and the money. You can only have two at a time. You can't have all three. And so when you do a sale with somebody or a purchase with somebody, keep those things in mind. Let's define title because in today's day and age, it's a little confusing. So for the purposes of these car auctions and for online auctions, let's refer to the title as a physical piece of paper that you get for that vehicle. And there are virtual titles on there, but if you do transactions with folks who live in a state where they have virtual titles, I would encourage you to ask them to get a physical title in advance of the transaction. It just makes it a lot smoother and it takes some of the worry and the concern out of the transaction. With that being said, there's always the outliers, right? So sometimes there's no title. So in some states prior to a certain year, trailers didn't have titles four-wheelers don't have titles in some cases and and race cars don't necessarily have titles and those are transacted on a bill of sale and so a bill of sale is something that is specific to selling an item that doesn't have a title and there's various forms online generally your state will have a bill of sale since we're talking about titles, now we're going to kind of talk about the condition of a title. In some circumstances, there are liens or loans on titles and on cars. And so in the title, there'll be a section for lien typically. And if there is a lien, they'll have a financial institution. They can sign off on it later on if the lien has been satisfied. And then that person has that title free and clear at that point. Now let's go a little bit deeper into the different types of titles. So there's different types of titles out there, and generally it's referring to the condition of the vehicle or some of its history it's went through. The first is the obvious, clean and clear title. Let's be sure that we don't think that clean and clear means that there haven't been accidents on that vehicle. There very well may be. So you need to make sure that that's understood. Next up is a salvage title. And so a salvage title is when the insurance company essentially decides that it's not worth fixing that vehicle. And so they sell it to a salvage yard or they sell it at a salvage auction. And then that car comes along with a salvage title at that point. Many companies like LKQ are the ones who buy these vehicles and then auction them off in the state that they are with salvage titles. Then there's other terminology. The first one is a branded title. These typically happen when the car is deemed not safe anymore and it will get a branded title. Then there's a rebuilt title. So let's say that you bought a salvage car and you rebuilt it. You can get it certified in some cases and it'll have a rebuilt title at that point. Then there's various kinds of bonded titles. That typically means some of the paperwork wasn't there during some of the transactions. And then there's a lot of other titles which are a little less common. There can be water damage, theft, lemon, hail, there's a lot of different ones that can show up in various states, but those are a little less common than the others. Now we're going to get into some deal specific terminology. First is MSRP. So you've probably heard this before. MSRP stands for Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. So the MSRP on a vehicle is set by the manufacturer and that is essentially the starting point for negotiation if you were to go into a dealership and buy a car in normal times. Today, in certain circumstances, you'll have an ADM, which is this added bid on top. And so an ADM stands for Adjusted Dealer Markup. This typically is in the five, ten, up to fifty, even a hundred thousand dollars in some circumstances. And so I don't really consider ADMs completely ethical. Nonetheless, they happen in today's society. So with a Z06 Corvette today, dealers are charging exorbitant ADMs on top of the MSRP. I will say that I did pay ADM one time. I paid it on GT350. I was one of the early buyers on that. I paid a $5,000 ADM. I'm not very proud of it. I will never, ever do it again. 
Um, but that's ADMs and MSRP. Now we're gonna start off with general car terms that you'll hear in auctions, car sales, or just enthusiasts talking about vehicles in general. The first term we're gonna talk about is chassis codes. And chassis codes are things that people use as enthusiasts or for a car sale to generally define the vehicle that they're actually talking about. For BMW, you have E30s and you have E46s and E92s. And these are all versions of the 3 Series chassis. And they specifically speak to year ranges of that 3 Series. Mercedes has a W211, 210. You have Toyota Supras, which are A80s for the Mark IVs. Then there are other ones like Porsche with 997, 991, so on and so forth. I know chassis codes can get quite confusing, so don't worry about it. You're in the same boat as everybody else. Just know that it's a different way that somebody can describe their vehicle to someone. So instead of saying I have a 2009 two-door M3, I can say that I have an E92 M3. It means the same thing, although the year isn't included, but it means the same thing from an enthusiast perspective. And if you ever have any doubt, you can always just hop on Google and Google W211 or E92 M3 or whatever the case may be. Next up are transmissions, and so from a general sense you have manuals and you have automatics. The way that this gets confusing is that we have F1 transmissions now that came along via Ferrari, Lamborghini, BMW, so on and so forth, and so these F1 style transmissions, they're actually manual transmissions from a transmission perspective. They have a clutch, but the shifting is done hydraulically through pulling on the paddles on the steering wheel. And so these F1 transmissions sometimes will get referred to as automatics. The next thing to talk about since we're talking about transmissions is which end of the vehicle is driving the vehicle or is both. So front wheel drive vehicles, FWD, rear wheel drive vehicles, and then you have all wheel drive vehicles and four wheel drive vehicles. So just separate all wheel drive and four wheel drive into off road based or street based. So since we're cruising down the road now in our all-wheel drive vehicle, let's talk about how to stop the vehicle. And there's a term that's used for that, and it's called ABS. And so ABS is anti-lock braking system. Anti-lock braking system is something that's used on vehicles to help it stop in a more controlled fashion. And it uses various things on wheel speed sensors to be able to do this, but in the simplest of terms, what happens is, is let's say that you're on a slick wet road and you just stomp on the brakes. You'll feel a surging pulse on the brake pedal and probably hear it as well. It'll go as you stop. What's happening is, is it's releasing the brake pressure on those wheels so that they don't slide because sliding wheels do not stop you quickly at all. Trust me, I know. With ABS, you stop much faster. And so ABS is something that came along through the 80s and it's used prolifically in all vehicles now. And now that we're stopped, we need to take off again. And so traction control is something that is used on almost all vehicles today. And so traction control helps you from spinning out the tires as you accelerate. And so if you're on that wet road, icy road, snowy road, or whatever, you step on the gas, it will modulate the power to the rear tires so that you keep traction and you're able to take off smoothly and controlled. There's also an adjoining system with that that's called stability control, and it has so many different terminology, I can't even go into all the details, but each manufacturer has their various versions of that terminology. The point of stability control is to keep the car stable, and so one of the examples of this is, let's say that you're on a very wet road or icy road, and if you pitch the car sideways, that would enact stability control and it would try to straighten the car out and keep it under control with it completely turned off you can drift and slide and have a whole lot of fun but stability control is all about keeping that car in line and stable and then traction control is to just keep you accelerating smoothly there are two different systems but they're usually tied together in an entire system with modern vehicles today I hope that some of this was interesting or educational or entertaining at the least. If it was, please think about liking or subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it and it helps us grow. Oh, and now you know what a TMU CleanVin E30MT 
on bat is RNM means. And it means essentially that it's total mileage unknown with a clean title. An E30 is late 80s BMW with a manual transmission. It was on bring a trailer and it was reserved, not met. And so now we have a base understanding for all of this crazy terminology that's out there. Don't worry if there's terms that you don't understand. Come back to this video and add comments if there's terminology that you don't understand and I'll try to decipher it or learn what it means. And also it gives me a good basis for a second video. And so I'd really like to be able to add to this and build on it over time. My hope is, is that you come away from this with a base level of knowledge so that you feel comfortable participating in online auctions or live auctions, car sales in general. And I really appreciate you joining me today and I'll see you in the next one.